Hey everybody, welcome. We are here in the brand new Greenville, South Carolina office space. I'm Tom Simmons and I'm joined today by... Jackie Baxley, the eh and &S practice leader here at HRP. And Jackie, what are we here to talk about today? Today, we're gonna to talk about the North American Emergency Response Guidebook, which I'm sure everybody is so interested to hear about, and everybody already knows everything about, right? I'm dying to hear about. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, hopefully not dying. Yes, not hopefully not dying. Emergency. Yes, exactly. So Tom, the North American Emergency Response Guidebook, I'm just gonna call it Emergency Response Guidebook, I might call it the ERG. Um, this is a tool that is used by emergency responders and it's also a tool that's used by people that ship hazardous materials in commerce. And as the name implies, it gives you information about emergency response should there be an incident during transportation. Okay, makes sense. So this book, um, if you zoom in, you will see that this book is dated 2020. Now, everybody who knows me knows I'm super frugal, but I'm not so cheap as to not have the most recent copy of this. It's only released every four years. Yes. So we're filming this in the year 2023. So this is still the most recent copy. We'll be looking for the 2024 version a little bit later. It's right around the corner. Keep your eyes peeled, folks. <laughs> Anxiously awaiting. Yes. We'll be running through the office. The ERG books are here. The ERG books are here. How much variation do we see between the, the years? Well, this is the most recent one. This is the one that was released in the year that I graduated from high school. So depending on if you're zooming in, I just gave my age. This one is 1993. And just notice from the size of it versus the size of the current one. Um, so when you're looking at a large swath of time, 1993, 2020, lo lots of changes, as you can just see in the volume of information. You know, the, the every four year cycle, um, as we learn new things about hazards associated with chemicals and products, there's a lot of new information about shipping batteries. We'll see a lot of fluctuation maybe in certain areas or with certain products, but all in all, not too much of a, of a wide scale change. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So let's, let's dive into what this book actually is. So again, this book is commonly used by people that ship hazardous material. Mm -hmm. Because if you ship hazardous material in commerce, you are required to provide emergency response information with that shipment information. So this is a tool that a lot of shippers use to be able to uh, either refer to what page in this book is the emergency response information or, or just glean other information for that. Yeah. Um, but this is also a wonderful tool and, and when we do our DOT training, this is something I always highlight. If you are located at a workplace or a facility that is close to a major interstate where you have a lot of hazardous materials going by on trucks. If you are located close to a major rail line where you might have a lot of hazardous materials you're going through on that rail line, yeah. um, then you might want to be familiar with, because this could be a part of your own internal emergency response program. This is not gonna allow you to respond to a scene safely. But this will allow you as maybe just somebody who wants to make sure that you're taking care of the health and safety and security of the people at your workplace. Hey, that rail, uh, rail car just tipped over. I see the following number on it. All right, we need to evacuate our plant. Yeah. We need to get to our offsite safe location. Um, you're not gonna respond to it. Only trained folks are gonna do that, but it can at least help you in your initial, we gotta get out of here phase. Definitely. So let's talk about how to use this book. I'm gonna talk about how to use this book from a really high level. I'm not gonna build on our traditional DOT hazardous material training. I'm gonna to try to present this for somebody that doesn't even really know what DOT hazardous material is. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so if you look at this book, you will see it's color-coded photos, color-coded pages rather. Um, so I want everybody to get familiar with the yellow pages. All right, yeah. Yes, and so, some of you might remember the yellow pages as being where we would look up phone numbers back in the day. Um, but here, the yellow pages are for you to identify high level, what is the material, and then what to do in case of an emergency. Yeah. And, and there's a four digit number that you might see on some transportation vehicles that are carrying hazardous materials and how to use that four digit number to go to the yellow pages to then find out what to do about the material. Um, so let's say you're you're driving home, you're on your way home from work, mm -hmm. and you, uh, pat, yep, we're driving home, <laughs> beep beep, um, <laughs> and we see a, 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 a truck drive by us, 
They have a diamond on the back of the truck. Okay. And let's say inside the that that diamond, you see the numbers 3266. Well, you can use that, that number 3266 to identify what's in that truck. And then if there is an emergency, what's the initial emergency response? And again, I don't want people to go out and start responding. Yeah. I want this information for you to be aware of. I got to get out of here. I, I don't need to be, you know, live streaming this accident I just saw. I need to be getting out of there instead. So if you look at the yellow pages, and again, I said 3266. Yeah. The yellow pages are organized numerically. So we just scan through until we find the number 3266. All right, here we go. 3266. Six. So right here. Uh -huh. So we see the ID number of 3266. Yeah. Next to it, we see the guide number of 154. Mm -hmm. And then next to it, it tells us high level kind of what this material is. So high level, this is a corrosive liquid, which is basic and inorganic. Gotcha. So I don't know what it is, but I know in, in this particular scenario, I have a general idea of what's the hazards. It's corrosive. I don't want to go bathing in this stuff. Yes. So this guide number, that's what's important. That guide number is what is pushing me to the orange pages in this book. Okay. Yeah. And the orange number is the guide number, North American Emergency Response Guidebook. Uh -huh. This is the guide of how to respond in case of an emergency. Okay. Now, this book is geared for our emergency responders. This is yeah. geared for our firefighters. These are geared for the people that have the, the training and the specialty equipment to be able to respond. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it high level, again, from a keep me safe, keep my coworkers safe, keep my workplace safe, keep my neighbors safe type situation, if you look at the guidebook, you'll see kind of high level, what are the health concerns? High level, are we concerned about a fire or explosion risk here? Uh, what type of protective clothing? You know, we're not gonna be putting on that protective clothing. That's gonna be what the emergency responders are gonna be putting on. And the, the key part here is, is if evacuation is needed. And, and that's why I think this is a great tool for anybody who is responsible for the health and safety and security of a particular work, workplace that is close to a railroad, that is close to, to a highway, that routinely has hazardous materials going through. You're looking to see, do I need to evacuate my facility? And if you're evacuating, by the way, most workplaces are gonna have an on-site evacuation point and an off-site evacuation point. This is gonna be an off-site evacuation. So, you know, Maybe your off-site evacuation is, you know, the, the, the elementary school one mile down the street. Sure. Or maybe it's, if you work at HRP, maybe it's the pub down the street. <laughs> yes. um, but, but whatever the case is, you would want to go to your off-site evacuation center here. If you can safely get there, by the way. Yeah. You don't want to have to drive through the emergency scene to get there. So, yeah, you'd want to find an alternative. Um, now notice here in this particular one, you see something that is highlighted in green. Yes. Green points to evacuation. Okay. So notice when we looked, the, looked up the 3266 over here, notice 3266 is not highlighted green. No. So what that means is we are not concerned about immediate evacuation. Okay. But see, notice here lower on this page, we see a couple of items that are highlighted green. Yeah. So if we were looking up this number 3275 instead, mm -hmm. see it's highlighted green, then when you're looking at the appropriate guide, so this, this one was guide 131, mm -hmm. if I flip here, now it tells you what to do if it is highlighted green. And you'll see if it says highlighted green, you're evacuating. It's getting out of there. We're getting out of there. Yeah. We're getting out of there. Mm -hmm. And for an emergency responder, just as info, that green is pointing the emergency responder to the green pages. Yeah. And these green pages, this tells the emergency responder the area that needs to be evacuated. So you can kind of be Johnny on the spot and get out of there before the emergency res responders tell you you have to evacuate. Mm -hmm. um, but, but this is telling the emergency responders for a small spill, this is the radius you need to evacuate. For a large spill, this is the radius you need to evacuate. And you'll notice here, if you're looking, it changes during day and night. Mm. And, and a lot of our folks here at HRP that work with air emission calculations and air dispersion modeling can get all into how it, it, it matters whether it's day or night because of temperature inversions and how far uh, materials will travel yes. in the air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, perfect. Does it change at all if it's coastal versus inland? 
Mm, that's a good question. Um, there, you all, an emergency responder is always going to look at which way is the wind blowing. Yeah. So, you know, if you're coastal, you know, depending on how close you are to the coast, you're gonna have a lot more, you know, a lot more wind. And so that might direct, you know, the, the distances and things of that nature. But for this, this is, notice this is the initial isolation. As details emerge, as we get more information about the material, as we get more boots on the ground relative to the response, it will change. It will be an ever evolving process. But this is just the initial, yeah, action. Mm -hmm. So now we know what the book is, we know how to use it. So Jackie, how do you actually get this book? Well, Tom, if you register for HRP DOD Hazardous Materials Training, this book too could be yours. Um, so we actually integrate this in a lot more detail in our DOT Hazardous Materials Training. We give all of our trainees a book so they actually have a copy of it. Um, now, if you want your own book, you know, and you're just not gonna participate in one of our trainings, that's fine as well. Um, in the notes below, we can put the link to the DOT website where you can get this book. Um, you can pay $2.99 to get this book itself um, from the supplier, but it's also free in a downloadable PDF format from the website. That's what we'll put in the link. Um, and it's also available in an app. And I think that might be a future video that we might want to do. Could be. Could Stay be. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, Jackie, thanks so much for joining us. Of today. course, of course. Thank you all out there. Remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Stay safe.